Okay, my name is Barbie Keel. I run an animal sanctuary and this is Chewy who we've just written a nice book about and it's called The Street Dog Who Found a Home and if you hang on I will read part to you. It's funny how a dog can work its way into your heart. Normally when a, a dog arrives I work hot, hard not to get attached. It's important in these early days that very often the animal will be rehomed or will need to undergo treatment of some kind. If me or any of the staff get too emotional about each dog or cat that enters the sanctuary, we'd never be able to do our jobs. I have to remain detached, however special or lovable each animal is. When Chewie arrived, I thought, oh, here's another funny little dog, but very quickly he wormed his way into my affection. He was so mangy, straggly and nervous that he pulled on my heartstrings. His endearing little face, the way he cocked his head to one side when listening to me speak, how he snuggled right under the blankets on the two nights he'd been with me, and his gentleness had won me over. By the second morning when I'd woke and felt the dog beside me, watching him yawn, stretch and shake himself down before wagging his tail as to say breakfast time, I realised that I couldn't imagine life without him. There was something special about him and I couldn't pretend to myself that I wasn't already attached. I know it sounds corny, but I petted him that morning. I knew I had fallen in love. Perhaps it was his deep dark eyes that looked like they understood everything I said. Perhaps it was the state of him, the matted fur, the shaking limbs, the scars, patches of baldness. Perhaps they unleashed my maternal side. I don't know what it was, but I suddenly felt as if we were kindred spirits and I knew I wanted Chewie to become my dog. Immediately I saw that I had a big problem. The elderly couple presumably still wanted him, though I'd heard nothing from them yesterday. I guess they had been held up and would pick him up today. Instead, Chew was going to be rehomed. I had promised him to them and we'd been through all the checks to make sure they could offer a suitable home to a new dog, which they passed with flying colours. But how could I follow through on this promise if I thought Chew was meant to be mine? How have I let this happen? I chided myself. Your job is to rehome them, Barbie, not keep them. There didn't seem to be any solution to this. With a heavy heart, I looked down at him, knowing I would have to let him go, though I desperately wanted to keep him. My mission in life is to rescue abandoned and ill-treated animals, and if that possible, nurture them back to health, happiness, and look for a suitable family to become their permanent owners. As an animal foster carer, one of the hardest things I have to do is say goodbye to a beloved creature that has come into my care through no fault of their own and has grown on me and my staff during the time with us. Nothing prepares for you for how emotional it can be to them, give them up and that to their new owners, but it's a necessary part of the process because otherwise we'd be overrun. I wouldn't be able to take in any new animals in need of our care. The an Animals themselves often sense that change is coming and they come, become unsettled and anxious, which only makes the process more traumatic for us humans. The only way I've found to deal with it is to be bright and as positive as I can be during the rehoming process and try to remind myself that the animal is going to a loving home and I've done the best I can for them. Right, thank you for listening to me read part of my book. I hope you'll buy it. Um, if you read it, you'll find out more about what happened to Chewy, and also you'll find more about Barbecue Animal Sanctuary, what we do on the internet.